Hello everyone, uh, good morning and welcome to a brand new episode of the Butterfly Princess Show with me, Steph Marie, aka your host, aka the Butterfly Princess. Today my guest is the lovely and very knowledgeable travel um, expert and very knowledgeable about travel, especially for disabled travel for people with disabilities. Uh, the, the lovely John Fletcher, who is the, uh, who is from really good travel company. Now I, I've been speaking to John. Um, I know John well um, before he came on because um, I'm going on a cruise around uh, France, Barcelona, and Italy back end of September and I wanted to know some accessible things to do around the, the the areas or around the ports and John has very kindly put a very accessible guide of step farmer as well as uh, arranging tickets for a hop on hop on bus for Barcelona. So that's how I know John and, and John is also the host of the Weekly Good Travel Guide where um, uh, each Sunday he talks, each Sunday he releases a new podcast episode where he talks about um, accessible travel, accessible sites, um, accessible destinations and, he's all, and he also has a variety of different guests on that podcast as well from like the Virgin Voyages, the Brooklyn Hotels so I'm really looking for this fun and informative travel chat today. Hi John, thanks for joining us today. Hi Steph, you've just made me sound absolutely amazing and I I hope I live up to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure you will, John, I'm sure you will. Um, so could you tell us first of all about, what, about the Weekly Good Travel Company? Right, well, I've been in the travel industry, oh, this is going to make me sound old now. I've been in the travel industry 12 years, and up until the pandemic, I was purely a cruise specialist, and uh, I had a company called Silver Service Cruises, and coming into the pandemic, like everybody else, I couldn't go on holiday. I couldn't sell any holidays. So I started talking to other disabled travellers. Uh, I should say that I'm in a wheelchair myself for most of the time. Um, and we found that most accessible travel is being sold with carers and People were saying to me, I don't want that. So we really specialise in the more independent traveller rather than somebody who needs uh, a care package included. So we don't sell you anything that you don't need. We ask you what you need. Um, the other thing that we found was that disabled travellers often were telling us people jumped in with you need this and you need that and all the barriers when all they wanted to really talk about initially was their travel dreams so we flip everything on its head and we talk about the travel dream so far um so we we don't talk about the disability at first. We don't talk about the barriers. We, we deal with those a little bit further down the line. So our first question is always, what is your travel dream? And I have to say, I absolutely love listening to people's tra travel dreams. You know, like this week, I've had people who want to do just a nice little break in the Lake District, um, right through to people who want to do, believe it or not, Machu Picchu. Um, and we've also had people 
looking at Mauritius. So we we literally cover the whole of travel. Um, and we look at trying to find ways that we can make their travel dreams come true. So our second question to everybody is, we've heard your dream, it's fantastic. Right, you tell me how I can make that dream come true because you know yourself, Steph. Who knows what you need better? You or the you, travel agent? Yourself, yourself. Go. Exactly. So we then take what you tell us you need and we look at it together. And then what we try and do is we, I always say to people, if I take a look at it, and I spot something that might make that dream even better and make it easier for you. Do you want me to tell you about it? So again, we're giving you the opportunity to say yes. I'd love to know or no. I'll stick with what I know. So we try and do it that way. We work with people. And I have to say, I don't think I've ever had to say to anybody yet, it's impossible. So there we go. <laughs> and like, and like, John, obviously, you being in a wheelchair yourself, and obviously, like, you've, you say, you know, you travel a lot, you go on a lot of cruises, and you've been to a lot of cities you, um, when we were talking about you know helping me with my travel um, with, for my cruise um, Barcelona and you say that Barcelona is your favourite destination it certainly is I well, I have a bit of a family connection with Barcelona because um, I actually found out that my ancestors way, 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 way back. And I know people think I'm old, but I'm not that old. Uh, <laughs> but we're talking way back. Came from Barcelona. Um, so I fell in love with the city, really, because I've got that little bit of a connection with it. But for me, Barcelona is just so beautiful. It's one of the most accessible cities in Europe. Um, I, I'm one of those people, I don't like doing all the touristy things. I like to get off the beaten track a little bit. And one of the big things I love about Barcelona is you can actually do that in a wheelchair. Um, if I say to most people, oh, go visit the old town in a wheelchair, and people go, uh, what? In a wheelchair? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's actually easier in a wheelchair because all the um, pavements, there's lots of <laughs> drop curbs, um, the roads you don't have cobbled streets, or if there are, they're, they're great fun to go over. <laughs> get, get, they give me a bit of exercise, you know, like, I'll tell you what, my tush after a, a, a cobbled street is rather elegant. But, um, yeah, it, I just love looking into doorways. Um, and sometimes... In the old town in Barcelona, those doorways can be a real discovery. A um, good example of this is we passed this beautiful gateway. And I'm really nosy. I don't know about you, Steph. If I see an open door, I have to look through it. Yes, yeah. You know what I mean? 
you, you yeah. just look like to be a bit nosy. And I saw this open gateway. And in the gateway was this little bar. But beyond the bar was this most beautiful courtyard. And we thought, I wonder if the bar's open. So we wheeled in and the gentleman behind the bar said, yes, we're open. Would you like a beer? And if somebody asked me that question, I always say, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I had to pay for it, <laughs> you know, but we were sat then in the courtyard of a Renaissance merchant's palace, and it was absolutely beautiful. There was a stairway that went down, came down from the merchant's living quarters to where he would have sold the whatever he was selling. I think he was selling silks and stuff like that, but I can't be sure. Um, he may have been selling um, grain or, you know, but it was absolutely fantastic. And you could just imagine the merchant coming out of his palace seeing his customer down below and coming down those stairs, you know, you knew who was going to get the better deal. It was going to be the merchant. He was going to take that customer for every penny they could get. So yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. And I found out that in the 19th century, this beautiful palace and courtyard was an art school and it's still an art center to this day but some of the famous artists who were trained at this art school were people like Gaudi who designed La Sagrada Familia uh, like one mere I always get this name wrong Jan Muriro, who is a famous sculptor from Barcelona, just to name two. So it was a really special place. And and obviously as well, um, obviously you've travelled to different places around the world. I don't know, but you, you and your partner do a lot of cruises and you're sort of like really, really knowledgeable about cruises and especially the new new ships that are coming about because when we, we chatted, you spoke about, I can't remember the, the, um, the uh, cruise liner, but you said you um, it was coming out next year and they actually go from Liverpool to the different destinations. Oh, we're talking about Fred Olsen um, and Borealis. Well, she's actually been launched and she is Fred Olsen's new ship, but she's not really a new ship. She's actually an old ship from Holland America line. And... Um, when I say Fred Olsen to a lot of people, they have this image that it's very old ships. Um, forget that. Borealis is one of the most beautiful ships I have been on. Very accessible. I managed to get round in my wheelchair very easily. Um, I was shown several of the accessible cabins. And... They have been beautifully done. I have to say, if I could afford it, I would have the top wheelchair accessible cabin, which is a beautiful suite. Um, but if I can't afford that, for me, my favourite suite after that, or it wasn't a suite, it was actually a cabin, was the 
ocean view cabin um, with a window. And the window looked outside onto the deck, <laughs> which is most unusual. But I actually quite liked because you can keep an eye on what's going on outside. And, you know, it's very nice. You know. Yeah, yeah. Watching people going past, you know, um, as I say. And so... Um... I, I lost you there a minute, Steph. Tell <laughs> me about that. Uh, so, like, what other destinations have you liked to travel to, John? And what what destinations would you like to? What is, well, I suppose because you in your job you listen to you get to hear about other people's travel dreams, oh, yeah. as you said. What What's your travel dream? <laughs> oh, what's my travel dream? Well, I was very lucky um, a few years back to travel on the Queen Mary 2 on the transatlantic. And uh, I was very lucky because I was staying in what they call Queensborough, which is the big suite, the uh, very, very, very posh sweets. And with those sweets, you get a butler and you get a, um, a drinks cabinet. Uh, and they put your favourite drinks in. So, for example, with me, it was a bottle of whiskey. And for David, my partner, he likes his gin. And they put a litre bottle of whiskey in and a litre bottle of gin in. Because we were coming home on the um, Queen Mary 2 to take the bottles with us. <laughs> so that was quite nice. But you, you get to eat in a beautiful restaurant. Um, and the one thing I love about cruisers, and a lot of travel agents won't tell you this, some people like to eat on their own and have a table for two. Others like to share a table. And it's like having a dinner party every night. And we, we were very lucky on that cruise because we had a table of eight and you never know who you're going to be with. And this one particular journey we were sharing our table with two professors from UCLA um, one of which was a psychology professor and so I kept trying to be careful not to uh, scratch my head or you know touch my nose or you know anything just in case he started interpreting it <laughs> um, but he, he told me he, he was off duty. He wasn't going to do that. So after a day two, I felt a little bit more at ease. Uh, we also had a couple who owned a diving company uh, who salvaged from ships that had uh, been sunk. So that was quite interesting. Um, but we also had two old ladies on. And we got talking, and the first old lady, she, I found out that she was a TV presenter in Canada, and she was great fun. She was a children's TV presenter in Canada back in the 1960s, and uh, she told me quite a few little tales. And then I got talking to the other lady, her friend, and I said, oh, what, what brings you on the cruise? And she said, oh, my, my son sent me on the cruise. He thinks I need a rest. I said, oh, that's, that's lovely. I said, what, what does he do? She said, oh, he owns a company that uh, makes electric cars. 
And I looked at her and I said, oh, does he? Yeah. Um, he owns Tesla. Oh, wait, wait. Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would... I was sat with his mum. Oh, oh, she was so naughty because she kept on in Queen's Grill. They have caviar and you can order it, you know, free of charge. And so we kept, we kept looking at each other and egging each other on to have another ca a, a jar of caviar every night. So we did. Um, but I have to say, Elon's mum and her friend. Elon might have sent her to have a rest, but she was dancing the feet off the dance hosts in the uh, in the ballroom every night. So I don't think there was very much rest going on. But there's a bit of gossip for you. <laughs> but the people you met who you were sat with of an evening while you were having your evening meal it must you must have had some really fascinating and interesting conversations that's the beauty of it you like i say you never know who you're going to be sat with another example of this you'll have to excuse my hound just shaking there she likes to get in on the act every so often yeah, my <laughs> um, we were on a cruise in Miami from Miami down to uh, Mexico and on the last morning we went down to breakfast and breakfast is usually a time when you do have to share a table and we were sat on the table and I looked across now I have a bit of a guilty pleasure in that I love a certain TV program all about pawn shops in Las Vegas. And I've got to admit it, and one of the people sat at the table was one of the stars of the TV show with his uh -huh. mum. Now, I'm not going to gossip, I'm not going to give any names, but I think you might have guessed who it is because he's the comedian of the programme. And I, I tried very hard not to acknowledge that I knew who he was because he was on holiday. Yeah. But I worked two tanks and he was as funny as he was on the TV. So we had a really good giggle that morning. So yeah, you can, you, you never know who you're going to meet. You know, seriously. <laughs> the last portion, John, because we could talk all day, but unfortunately we haven't got the time. But the last portion, John, and this is when I'm hoping you know you could introduce me to some of your people you know within the industries, the really good travel podcast. Now, uh, I know that you've done quite a few episodes and you do some um, of solo episodes for which you talking about, you know, accessible travel and things like that. But you also have guests and stuff, like you've had a lady from Virgin Voyages. Oh, my had, friend Layla. <laughs> from, um, from the Hotel Brooklyn or the Hotel Brooklyn group. So, that it must be fa oh, another fascinating uh, example of chats to have with these people in the travel industry. I'm very lucky in that because I've been in the industry a long time, um, that I, I get to know people, but I also keep an eye on news stories. So, for example, um, a couple of weeks ago, you might have seen. Some if you if, if anybody follows social media, they may have seen a story about a gentleman who has designed the first wheelchair space on a plane. Now, 
Chris Woods, who designed the space, I was I did a bit of detective work and I, I got in touch with him. And I said, look, I've been telling everybody about this wheelchair space. I have had so many people ask me questions about it. And rather than me give wrong information, I'm going to ask you to come and talk to me about it. And it, I was really lucky that he did. Um, Chris is one of the nicest guys I've, I've ever talked to. We had a, a really good conversation. And if anybody wants to listen to the podcast, you can find us on Apple. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Google, all sorts. I think we're actually on Amazon and Audible as well. <laughs> but, you know, we, I find people, um, if, I, if I spot something, I, I often will, you know, get in touch with them. Um, so, yeah, we, we get some interesting people. Uh, last week, I was talking to a good friend of mine, Robin Shepherd. Now, if it wasn't for Robin... Really good travel company would never have got off the ground because yeah. we got the idea for the really good travel company sat in Hotel Brooklyn because we saw what they did. I saw okay. what Richard Branson does with Virgin in that he takes an existing idea and tries to make it a little bit different and a little bit better. Um, so it was lovely to chat to Robin because Robin, like myself, is in a wheelchair for most of the time. Um, we both love our hotels and he came up with the idea of a hotel that would be luxury, but accessible and inclusive to all. But the best thing is when you go into Hotel Brooklyn, you wouldn't guess that it, if you, if it's somebody who's not disabled, they won't see any difference to a normal hotel. Yeah. It's the little bit, little things that make the difference. So, for example, if you go into the bar in Hotel Brooklyn, and I'm sure me and you, are going to end up in that bar one day, aren't we, Steph? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we ha you will see that there are three different types of flooring, and this is so anybody with a visual impairment can actually feel the difference. So they know when they get into the bar. They know when they are heading towards the tables. Um, so my partner, sometimes I'm very naughty to him and say, David, your turn to buy the drinks. And he'll go, oh, I don't know where the bar is. I said, don't give me that one because you know where all the flooring is. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he knows. Um, it, if you go into the accessible suites, they are designed to be very luxurious and they are beautiful i have to say but they are wheelchair accessible they are stylish bathrooms for a change because i <laughs> hate bathrooms that look like they've come out of a hospital these don't these look very stylish so that if somebody oh, is yeah, yeah. not disabled you know, yeah, yeah, you know, so these are all set up ready for somebody with accessibility needs. But if it's somebody who is not disabled, they can still use the room because it's just absolutely luxury, you know. Oh. It, so that's great yeah. news. 
And so just to finish off, off John, um, like what, what, um, so basically what you do at really good, the really good travel companies, you make sure that every person's travel dream is possible, like you said, because you've not had to say to this day yet, but you know, it's impossible. So, you know, it, just because you've got a dis disability of some kind doesn't mean you can't travel. Exactly. Sometimes it's more difficult. Yeah. Um, and there are times when you have to be really creative to think of a way you can do it. Um, so, for example, and what might be accessible for one person might not be for somebody else. And you yeah. have to remember that, you know, you know, as well as I do, Steph, the world is not perfect. No. Um, and sometimes you have to say, look, it is going to be difficult and there's going to be probably parts that you are not going to be able to enjoy full accessibility. Yeah. And that's, you know, and that's being honest. Yes, of course. I'd rather be honest with people and say, look, you are, for example, the lady who wanted to go to Machu Picchu. I've had to say to her, yes, it is possible, but, because, and she can walk a few steps, you know, she can walk a few steps, so that's not too bad. But I had to say to her, you're not going to be able to get around the whole site. You're not, you know, there are going to be places where you may need to um, go up a few steps. So there's going to be a few challenges along the way. Yeah, yeah. And we, we've got to be honest about that. Um, you can, can you, I, somebody asked me today about um, Athens. And I've just been doing, I'm just in the process of doing a little um, TikTok video about things you can do in Athens. And it can be very easy to say, oh, Athens oh, is, you know, you, you can't do it. Oh, yeah, because it's very, like, historical. And, yeah. You know, I went to Perea, well, Athens last year on the cruise. And, you know, because I'm, like, really into my history, so I want to see the Acropolis and stuff. But uh, I knew that I couldn't fully get up to the Acropolis because there's steps. But well, I think that, say, I've, like... I've got news for you, Steph. The Acropolis now has a lift. Really? Yes. Really? <laughs> ah, you see. Um, and they've also done paths around it as well. Uh, back in my, back when I last went to the Acropolis, um, I was like you. I, I, there was no, there was no lift, so I managed to get up. But coming down, I got a fear of falling um, at the time I was still able to walk some distance but not very far um, and my balance was not very good and I got up okay but coming down I had to this sounds very inelegant and it must have looked hilarious to anybody watching on but the only way I could get down was to go down the steps on my bottom. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, 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 by the time you can imagine, by the time I got to the bottom, I got a very dusty bum and a very, um, a very bruised bottom from all the steps. So, yeah. <laughs> but yes, they, they, Athens, they are, they are making efforts. It's not perfect yet. I'm not going to tell anybody that is. You know, it's, there are certain parts of the Acropolis that are 
still um, challenging, but it, it you can't you. They are making the efforts now to bring it into the 21st century. Um, yeah, so you can have a lot. Of, it's sometimes, this is why I do the guides, really, because we, often people assume that it, something's not going to be possible. Talking about guides, I'm going to do a little plug, and I'm going to give you a, an exclusive because I can tell you now because I've got the first chapter out of the way that I'm currently writing the first really good travel guide and the first city we're doing is London Rit. so that will be coming out in the next couple of months <laughs> Uh, we'll look out for that, John, and I'll have a read of it. I'll look forward to having a read of it when it comes out. Yeah, it's all going to be on... Um, we're, we're being very green. Uh, we're, it's going to be an e-book, so you'll be able to take it with you on your, on your iPad, and having downloaded it, you'll be able to flick through. It's, it's, uh, but it's looking good. Is looking nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, like you say, like, uh, we love travel agents. Uh, like, I've had a lot of experience. I've had a lot of experience with it this time. That's why I came to you about, you know, accessible things to do around my free step offs. Because I think with normal travel agents, there's not enough. They don't have enough training um, with regard to disabled travellers. You just think about, like you say, the barriers, first of all, you can't do this and you can't do yep. that. I, I'll, let you, I'll tell you a little story. This is honest truth. I came, into, I, I came into travel 12 years ago because some... I went into a travel agent. I'm not going to name and shame because I don't do that. And we wheeled in and we sat at the desk. And the first question I said, who is your carer? <laughs> so I looked and I said, when I pointed to my partner, David, I said, it's David. And I looked at him and I said, who's your carer? And he pointed at me. So, but. What what really sealed the deal for us to go into travel was that we were booking a very expensive holiday. And it was for my for a big birthday. I'm I'm not going to tell you how, how old I was, but it was a big <laughs> birthday. And we wanted to go to a very beautiful Caribbean island. And the travel agent said, well, you can't go there. I said, why not? He said, oh, it's uh, all pebbles. I'm like, oh, OK. I thought, that's strange, because Caribbean, it's normally sandy beaches. Yeah. You know, so I let them carry on a little bit. I mean, I, I got a bit suspicious, because she then said, oh, you you know it's a um, there were certain restrictions within this country and I went oh that I'm like this doesn't sound like they've got the right place so yeah. I, I I said to the uh, travel agent hang on a minute can I have a look at where you're looking at and I turned the the screen round um. The place I wanted to go was called Palm Island, and the travel agent was looking at the Palm Dubai. So after that, wrong. I decided no, they got the wrong place. So after that, I decided I am going to become a travel agent. <laughs> yeah, people 
accurate information, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, right, so um, it's been a really great talk to you, John, and, you know, I, I will be looking out for them, like, uh, really good travel books when e-books can become out first one on London. And I'd be really grateful if you could, you know, um, pass my details on to some of the people you know, because I would love to have some great conversations with them about what they too. do as well. I, I, yeah. I, but the book doesn't come out on Monday. It comes out in a couple of months. <laughs> I, I, you, you'll have, you'll have me writing all day for the next three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it's going to be a couple of months, but it, it is. But it's been lovely talking to you, Steph. Uh, Yeah, it's right, Steph. <laughs> yeah, it just went a bit music then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me about it. I, I know. Technology's great, but there are some drawbacks to it. <laughs> oh, I, I know, I know. Oh, just to give you a little bit of gossip as well. We... I'm doing a new podcast, hopefully within the next couple of months, with Hotel Brooklyn. But we, it's not disability. We're going to do a cocktail club. <laughs> that would be really fascinating. And I'd, I'd really love to get involved with that in some way, John, because I do love a cocktail. Do you? Yeah. Well, you, you'll you'll have to come because we're going to be recording. Um, what we do is it will tell the story of the cocktail. Then my friend Lucas, who's the um, okay food and beverage manager of the hotel, he's going to show how it's made, and then guess what? We all drink. We all have a good old gossip. <laughs> okay. And, and, and then it got, oh. and we take it from there. <laughs> so I've got, it looks like I might have. To... I would love to. Well, hopefully, I, would... I, I should have the, um, I'm going to be announcing the dates hopefully next week because I've, I can't get into the hotel this week because I'm still recu recuperating. Um, but as soon as we set up the Facebook group for it, I will send you a link. <laughs> yes, I, w I would love to get involved with that, John. And, you know, um, and it'd be great for me to meet the different people also. It, it's going to be great fun, I tell you. I, you know... <laughs> So anyway, I shall let you go, my darling. Um yeah. Have have a great day. And uh, like I say, I will yeah, you too, John. Over the next couple of days, I will get that guide out to you. It's just that I've got to be as as the doctor said to me, I've got to be careful. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
and chat whenever you've got time, obviously. Could you put together like a little list of like people you know who I could contact to be guests on the show and stuff? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll put I'll put him I'll put it in me to do list. <laughs> John, that'd be great. Thank you. You take care, my darling. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.